This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FI Investment Group and your host of Washington Calling, where we interview leading voices from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is Salma Shabir. She's the Program Manager of the South Asia Warranty Association of Environmentalists, also known as SAVAE, a community-based organization in Kashmir that focuses on improving the lives of the people in the region. And its motto is taking care of neighbors so that they can ensure a safer, better and stronger community. Thank you, Salma, for coming to our show and welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you, my pleasure okay. for inviting me to your show and giving me a chance to interact with you. I'm sure. highly thankful to all sure. you and all the members. Please tell us about your organization and also what made you to start this organization. And tell us a little bit about, you. this is a community-based organization, so how do you sustain yourself? And tell us a little bit about this three-year-old girl. Uh, her name is Filza Fahim. What a wonderful girl she is. And she, her parents should be proud of, as she, they have raised her in a manner that plays an important role in terms of environment. Yes. Yes, Frank Islam, I'll tell you about South Asian Voluntary Association of Environmentalists is a developmental organization working for environment and people of South Asia. We at Savvy envision a border-free South Asia where all regions embarrass a commitment to protect, share, and sustain natural resources. Also, we at Savvy are looking at cooperation in sharing and management of natural resources. Our focus primarily focus are on issues like water, food, and energy security while working with the communities to cope with the challenges posed by climate change. So in this direction, we are making small steps with the limited resources we have at our disposal. Involving young and children in our efforts of environmental conservation is at the core of everything we do. Promoting kids like Filza Fahim, as you mentioned, she mentioned she's a wonderful child, is one such initiative that we have undertaken recently. She's an amazing kid, I may say, with an inherent drive for the environment. And her parents have been doing a wonderful job by making her to plant a tree in a month that too across varied geographies. So far, she has planted tens of trees and of varied varieties like apple trees, apricot trees, pear trees, of various varieties. So we are trying our best to support her with the saplings and recognize this humble act by awarding her on World Environment Day this year. Let me tell you she has a potential to our Greta Thunberg. All she needs is encouragement and support so that she can do more and be role model for others to follow. That's very well said. As I understand one of the guiding principles of your organization is and I quote, taking care of our neighbors makes for a stronger, safer, and better community. So tell us a little bit about what step have you taken to put this principle in practice and to lend, to lend a helping hand? And also, what do you do in terms of community to bring people together? Yes, uh, it's a very good question, Frank Islam. As you're aware of the fact that we're already in a phase wherein the results of our actions are all in the name of development, are constantly haunting us in different forms of environmental disasters. While the consensus is broadening as to how we should respond to the challenges which have emerged because of our own misdeeds, the rear guard action is not as intense as the frequency and scale of environmental degradation and environmental disaster warrants. So like many dedicated groups and environmental volunteers around the world, the SAVE team also seeks to contribute in this direction while working for environmental protection in South Asia. This also means bridging the divides across different regions of South Asia so that coordinated work is done for the conservation of environment and ecology across all the regions. Action, I may say actions speak louder than words. So we at Savvy believe in working together and see whole South Asia as one ecological unit. When nature knows no boundaries, how can these artificial boundaries by human divide environment? 
any act, maybe it's small, it does have an impact on all neighbors. A conservation act is any part of the South Asia will have a good impact on the whole of the region. So that is how we believe in taking care of our neighbors makes for a stronger community. Very well said. Another motto of your organization is when we do, when we all do a little, we can do so much. What made you think of such a wonderful virtues and shed a bright light on this thoughtful model? What does it do for you? Right. Uh, South Asia is one of the most populous regions with over 1 billion people living in India alone. Having a huge diversity of languages, religions and outlooks across the subcontinent. The South Asian countries share many similar environmental problems stemming from poverty and its consequences on the natural resources. According to the World Bank, during the past decade, South Asia has been the second fastest economically growing region in the world. And their efforts at increased production have put increasing pressure on natural resources and the environment. Significant natural resources concerns of the region include depletion of water quality and quantity, dwindling forests and coastal resources and soil degradation resulting from nutrient depletion and salinization. With little resources and funding from private individuals, we could undertake little steps, little, little steps, one small step at a time. These little humble steps took us long time, but we are not in a hurry. All that matters to us is making difference in lives of people and making environment better with a vision to see whole South Asian communities working together, coming together for the betterment of ecological conservation and preservation of natural habitat. So I understand what you're saying. All of us are in this together. And if we are together, we can help shape a better future for South True. Asia True. and for the world. Correct. True. It's not one man show. All to, uh, of us we have are come in this together. Right. Yes, together we can do one this. We all know Kashmir is known for its breathtaking natural beauty. One Mughal emperor, I think it was Jahangir, who said, "I did a little bit of research on it. It's a paradise on earth." Yes, true. Please tell our global viewers about the splendid beauty of yes. Kashmir, including the glaciers, fresh water. But unfortunately, now it has descended into deadly war, fighting, killing, and human rights abuses. Yes. Do you think the Indian government can make Kashmir more stable and secure? And do you believe that the Kashmir conflict has taken a toll on the Indian economy and Kashmir's economy? And do you have any thoughts on the road ahead for Kashmir? Yes. Yeah, you, are, you rightly said that Iqbal has said this, Kashmir is a paradise on earth. And truly it is paradise on earth. And uh, I uh, request all to visit once uh, Kashmir, one, uh, once you should visit Kashmir. So I will tell you the state of Jammu and Kashmir, especially the valley of Kashmir is characterized with beautiful lakes. The ecosystems of these lakes is degrading fast. The Dal Lake, which is the heart of Srinagar is situated in the main city well known for its geographical setting and splendid beauty. Is it in pathetic condition? Its crystal clear water has become highly polluted, giving an obnoxious order. In the mid nineties, with tourism becoming a key industry for Jammu and Kashmir, the pressure on the lake multiplied. There were less than a hundred houseboats on the Dal and Nagin lakes earlier, but they have grown to a staggering 1400 by 1981. The 1981 census recorded that hamlets around the lake had a population of uh, about 24,000 and an increase over percent since 1973. It's all because of this tourism. The heavy deforestation in the catchment which discharged their water in the Dal Lake have accentuated the process of siltation. The encroachment of the uh, Dal has been by the uh, cutting down of these forests and encroachment by these houseboats and added to the pathetic, have done to pathetic to the Dal Lake. According to one estimate, the Dal Lake bears an annual sit load of about 80,000 tons. The land, the spawn has been reclaimed for farming and pastoral activity. Tourism development has thus damaged the la lake's ecosystem, making them less useful for the people. We are trying to raise awareness among the masses on the protection and conservation of these natural heritage, 
We are trying to drive many awareness camps here in Kashmir and trying to protect and conserve the national heritage. Do you see a brighter horizon, Salma, uh, as you endure this, yes, these situations course. in terms of uh, bringing the people together? There's a road ahead um, in terms of what's going to happen in Kashmir. And I just yes. understand the Modi said something about a couple of days ago in terms of having its own state government. And uh, obviously the India uh, and its yes. abuses uh, of the, their power have destroyed the social, economic and political fabric of Kashmir Valley. Yes, I believe that let's not discuss politics here because politics is huge history. And so we will not discuss politics is much better. So I, uh, I request you to only please stay focused on this environmental thing only. Uh, good so question. As you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a politician myself in the United States. That's what I. Yes. Let me I tell do. you that uh, the survey, the South Asian Volunteer Association of Environmental Place, is a joint initiative of individuals. Okay. Concerned over the continued environmental degradation. As you said, that do you see future in this? And can this be helpful to us? I may tell you. With environmental issues posing serious challenges to the world, there's hardly any place on the face of Earth immune to the threat. Amid this precarious situation, a group of individuals has come together to take an initiative, aimed not just at creating widespread awareness among the South Asian regions on environmental issues, but also taking the issue with governments and policy makers concerned for practical measures. I will tell you this, not going beyond like this. And SAVE, I will tell you something about SAVE. SAVE was established in 2007 and plans to expand its chapters in Bangladesh, Bhutan, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. SAVE focuses on ecological cooperation to undertake and reinforce regional cooperation for the conservation of water resources and environment, pollution-free region, and preparedness to deal with natural disasters. And SAVE will be working for the promotion of sharing of basic resources among nations in the sub-region, so as to reduce production and trading costs. Recognizing the need for the cooperation in sharing and management of natural resources, the South Asia will be working on issues like water, food, energy, uh, security, and more importantly, on climate change. Main yeah, so let me, let me talk about the impact of climate change in Kashmir. As I understand, the temperature of Kashmir Valley is likely mm -hmm. to increase in the decades to come. Yes. The changing environment is, is expected to cause more heat stress, poor air quality, and can compound many health threats to the human. So climate change in Kashmir will have impact on economy, not only in Kashmir, not only in India or other countries, but the world. Can you shed some yes. bright lights and you talk about that a little bit? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I will tell you that it's, it predicted a further two degree rise, uh, Celsius rise of temperature. Kashmir's temperature between 1879, if you look back at 1879 and 1979, had registered an increase of only 0.7 degrees Celsius. So similarly, the temperature on the same day at Gulmarg and Pahalgam, the valley's famous tourist resorts here in Kashmir, all uh, know that, uh, is and one of the coldest places they are, the Gulmar and Pahalgam, touched 8.8 .8 degrees Celsius and 11.9 degrees Celsius, respectively. This was when the average temperature for the last two places in the month was 0.4 degrees Celsius and 4.2 degrees Celsius, respectively. So glaciers in the region also shrunk at a significant rate. According to a recent study published in the Journal Scientific Reports, the study was carried over the Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh region as many as uh, about 12,000 glaciers were studied for thickness and mass change. Climate change poses a serious threat to the species diversity, habitats, forests, wildlife, fisheries, and the water resources in the region. Many wetlands in JNK that support 20% of the known range of biodiversity in the region are adversely affected. The climate changes resulting in changing weather movements are relatively unpredictable but could be important in the context of the incidence of different diseases like influenza. Mm -hmm. So 
Deficit in fruit production is growing in recent times in Jammu and Kashmir. With the reduction in rainfall, the rain for the agriculture will suffer the most. Yeah. Horticulture crops like apple are also showing decline in production and a real coverage, particularly due to, due to all, all this due to its decline in snowfall. Flash floods due to glacier lake, outburst floods may lead to large scale landslides and affect food security and enhance nutritional health. And uh, also, according to some studies, the ecological fragile Jammu and Kashmir is most vulnerable to climate change among states in the Indian Himalayan region. Given this scenario, is it high time for all of us to come together and protect our natural ecosystem for the future generations? And, well cooperation, and cooperation is the only way we, we can do so. Well, but the, but the people have to take the steps in order to protect the environment. Otherwise, you will not have the fresh water in Kashmir. As, as a result of the, the glaciers and the rise of temperature will create problems, not just for Kashmir Valley, but India, and his neighboring countries as well. Uh, so I want to change the uh, gears and talk about the impact and effect, effect of COVID-19 in Kashmir and why, what are you doing to make sure people get vaccinated? As a, and what, what do you do to motivate people when they're hesitant to get vaccinated? As I understand COVID-19, lockdown in Kashmir had a strong impact in, on phone lines, internet connections, and the political turmoil has caused many gender-based violence, as well as the mental health condition. Tell us about it. Yes, uh, the COVID-19, the COVID-19 has badly affected the economy of the region, thereby hitting the livelihood of the people, especially mm -hmm. in rural areas badly affecting their livelihood. The initial communication blockade, as you said, the communication blockade had its impact as well. Doctors were unable to download the guidelines of the COVID-19, what were the guidelines given. Families couldn't connect also. People were unable to do online shopping as all was blocked. There was com complete communication blockade uh, by, because of COVID-19. And uh, in Jammu and Kashmir, we had total cases of around, I guess, three months, three, uh, about that 476 is roughly less than 500 cases daily on, on daily basis and people recovered uh, so far we are almost uh, 302655 this is the figure and active cases at uh, uh, 6537 and the region had witnessed many deaths around above 4000 i don't remember actually the uh, the uh, 4200 deaths the region has it. So, but the but the medicine, uh, which is the vaccination, is this readily available? And how do you motivate people to get because they're hesitant to get vaccination? Uh, no, actually, uh, yes, vaccination is available. Around sixty six percent of the total population has been vaccinated above oh, the age oh, of forty five years. So, uh, I are you vaccinated, have... Salma? Yes, yes, I am vaccinated. I am actually I was diagnosed with COVID uh, positive. Some two months back, my whole family got COVID positive. Oh, so so you you recovered from that disease? Yes, deadly, I, yes. deadly yes. disease. Deadly disease, very deadly disease. So, Alhamdulillah, we got recovered from COVID nineteen. Then uh, we took vaccine also. So so you. I'm sure vaccinated. I'm uh, I, uh, I'm hope for the same that you have also vaccinated. Uh, oh yes, yeah. I, 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 I have been vaccinated six months ago. Okay, that's really great. Uh, well, uh, is there anything you want to talk about before we close our conversation, Salma? Uh, no, uh, I, I may say that uh, it was nice talking to you, Frank Islam. And uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to be on South Asia Monitor. I would also like to thank President uh, Tarun Basu, Director Uday, um, Sushil Gupta, and other team members, uh, Kuram at South Asia Monitor. Okay, thank you very much and thank you for watching. This is Frank Islam wishing you a great week.